Welcome to Robin's Nest Studios, I am Ken, and in today's video, we're going to build an objective marker. A while back, I had purchased a pair of Meccano shredders from Privateer Press. A video up here if you want to see me paint those. Included in that package was a small little bag filled with six baby shredders and a large base. These little baby shredders were the ducky shredder that's included with the blight bather. Molded around for a little while trying to contemplate what I was going to do with these shredders and I decided I'm going to make a custom objective marker for my Legion of Everblight army. Now when I was messing around with how I was going to do this, I quickly realized I wasn't going to fit all six shredders onto this large base. So I used four of them and I saved two for a future project. This model was going to kind of bookend the Legion army for the time being. The plan was to use this project as a test dummy for the epoxy sculpt and the Vallejo water texture. Legion of Everblight will still be my primary army, but anybody who paints knows you just get burnout on certain schemes. I've been painting purple now for over a year and a half. It's time to switch it up. But with that said, let's jump into the project. First thing I did was I glued the magnets to the bottom of the 50 millimeter base for this objective marker and I have it drying off to the side. Then I used separate tools to scoop out equal parts A and B of the epoxy sculpt putty. Then we take the time to knead the two parts together. Once they've been sufficiently mixed together, I take this little bit of putty and I create a mound to the one side of the base. This mound will later be the shoreline to the spawning pool. And then with a little bit of water on my finger, I rub it across the putty to smooth it out. Once the epoxy sculpt had dried, I was able to mess around with the placement of the little shredders themselves. I decided to have two of them still in the pool, one of them on the shoreline, and then one of the shredders halfway in the water and halfway out of the water. From there, I primed the whole thing black. So the first thing we're going to paint here is the undercoat to where the water texture is going to go. We are doing this so that when the water texture goes on top of it, it makes it look like the water is a red blood color. Then after I get the base tone for the water done, it I come in here with a leather brown and I just give a base coat to this dirt mound. Painting this brown will help with the sand that we lay over top of it later. Next I come in with a pure red from Army Painter and I try to blend the, a transition from the shoreline to the dark red of the water. This was to try and simulate that the water or liquid was getting deeper the farther from the shoreline that you got. And then the final step for the undercoat with the water texture is I come in with that dark red mixed with a little bit of black to darken it up even farther and I just paint the absolute edges of where this liquid is going to go. From there I just continue to paint these shredders the same way I would paint any other war beast in my legion army. I'm going to use the exact same scheme. First thing I did is I took the alien purple and I base coated all four of these shredders. Uh, 
And then once both coats of that alien purple have dried, I come in with the ooze purple and I slowly build up the highlights. This first pass here is with a 50-50 mixture of the ooze purple and alien purple. And then I come in for a pass of highlights with pure ooze purple. Now with this project really being a test piece, my highlights here are very rough and quick. I wasn't going for the smoothest of blends because the main purpose of this project was to test out the epoxy sculpt and the water texture. Then I give all of the horns to the shredders a base coat in heavy brown. I end up having to do three coats of heavy brown so that I could get full opacity over that purple that was underneath. From there we come in with a quick rough highlight of Iraqi sand on all these horns. Next up, we start placing the glue down for the sand for our shoreline. I like to put a little bit of glue down with my little dropper bottle there, and then I'll take an old brush and I'll spread the glue around trying to get it in all the hard to reach places without having it all pull up and gunk up. Then we sprinkle on some sand, making sure to get that entire mound covered. Once that dusting of sand has dried, we come in with some strong tone and we apply that to the entirety of the shoreline. This will help the sand appear as dirt to the eye. Final step for the shoreline is to add a couple grass tufts. I believe these are the winter tufts from Warworld Scenics. The dead grass looked appropriate on a bloody shoreline to me. After all the grass tufts dried, I hit this entire thing with a matte varnish. I mixed some red tone wash in with the water texture in that little squeezer bottle. I applied it and then I pushed it around with a, an old brush, making sure the water texture had spread everywhere and didn't leave any dry spots. Also making sure to pop any bubbles that I might come across. This first coat here was actually too thin and later on I ended up having to apply a second thicker coat of this water texture. Once the water texture dries, that's project complete. 
I think I did a good job of trying to capture the look of shredders crawling out of a spawning pool. I am very glad that I had decided to test both of these products out on this prior to applying them to an entire army. The epoxy sculpt worked amazingly. I'm actually a huge fan of epoxy sculpt after this and all I did was make a little mound. The Vallejo water texture I found out that you have to apply fairly liberally. In my first coat I decided to kind of put a little on and spread it around since it was a small area but when that first coat of the water texture dried it was actually very cracky looking and it actually kind of looked like a broken ice texture. I had thought I took a picture of it but I apparently did not. But when I had applied that second coat of the water texture over that, I applied it a little bit thicker and it came out perfect. All in all, I'm very happy with how this turned out and it's going to be a nice little addition to that Legion of Everblade army when I put it on the table. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that other social media stuff. For now, I've got to fly. Keep on painting, peeps.